to another Names Nico video. And my name is Nico, obviously, if you didn't know. And uh, if you're new to the channel, I make military content and airsoft content. Uh, I was in the army for five years. Etc. Etc. But before we get to that, you know, I need to give my GG MVP shout out. So this is for everyone who's subscribed. They pressed the little bell because for some reason YouTube doesn't want to tell the people who are subscribed to you that that dude just uploaded a video, right? So bit weird. And uh, you like the video and you're in the Giza Garrison, which is my like um, Discord server for airsofters, people who are still serving. Basically, everyone just jumps in there and has a little chin wag about the forces. I can show you. The fuck is going on there? I don't know. This is a, this is my lid for airsoft, and this is one of the this is a geezer garrison patch. Okay, there's only 15 of them been made. Okay, that's the geezer garrison. That's what we about. My GG MVP shout out goes to <laughs> my GG MVP shout out goes to Red the Twat. <laughs> YouTube don't demonetize a video, that's just his username, okay? So like I said, if you want a shout out, uh, subscribe, hit the bell icon, like the video, and be inside the Giza Garrison, which I will um, post a link to that in the comment section. And also, before I get the video, I just want to, like, thank everyone, man. Like, 62,000 subscribers. I'm honestly so thankful. I don't know what I'd be doing in my life if I wasn't doing YouTube. I just have, like... This is going to sound really homo and gay, like, whatever. Not there's anything wrong with being gay, oh my god, you know what I mean? Blah, 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 blah. Um, like, I just don't know what I do in my life, do you know what I mean? Like, I, have, I feel like I have a purpose, man. It's good. I like it. It's cool, man. So thank you very much for everyone who was just, like, subscribed to me, watch watch my videos. It's just a general geezer, mate. Like, thank you. I appreciate you guys. Right, anyway. Less of the, less of the whiff waft. Right. Chit chat, whatever you want to call it. Let's get into this video. Okay, so we are reacting to the most deadliest sniper that's ever lived, that's ever walked this earth, okay? Simo Heia. I hope I pronounced that right, guys. If I haven't, comment down below. I'm sure you will anyway. But yeah, without further ado, roll the clip. Simo? Oh, no. oh, that voice. The, death. the world's deadliest sniper. Simo Hauha is considered to be the greatest sniper of yeah. all time, reported to have taken 505. 505? Over half a K. Fucking hell. I wonder how he slept at night. That's such some real John Wick shit. Five kills. All of his sniper kills would be achieved during the Winter War of 1939 to 1939. Simo was born in a village in Finland near the Russian border. In his village, he would farm and take up hobbies in hunting, shooting, and snow skiing. At age 17, he joined the Civil Guard and established himself as an... Imagine just being a farmer, just chilling, <clears throat> doing your crop, herding your sheep, whatever you're doing. And then, like, a couple of years later, you just end up being the world's most deadliest sniper. From, like, a farmer, chilling, doing his crops, to being just, like, an absolute unit and just a hideous war machine. Mad. Excellent marksman in target shooting competitions and demonstrated excellence. Just a geezer, clearly. During this time, he was familiarized with the Finnish <coughs> Mosin Nagant 2830 and the Suomi submachine gun. Just reminds me of Call of Duty. Constant practice enables Simo to hit the target 16 times per minute at around 500 feet or 150 meters away. This was incredible considering the Mosin Nagant rifle, is a yeah. action rifle and holds five round stripper clips. Wow. In 1939, the Soviet Union invaded Finland, which would become known as the Winter War or the Russo-Finnish War. The Finns were outnumbered, but knew the land well and used guerrilla-style tactics to take on the Red Army. Simo saw his baptism of fire on the Kola battlefield, where at one point there were 4,000 Soviets against only himself and 31. Jesus Christ! Just... Right, I want you to do this exercise with me. Just put, take your mind to that. You see... 4,000 Russians coming towards you with tanks and rifles and you look to your left and there's about 15 blokes that side and you look to your right and there's about 15 blokes that side versus 4,000 people that's some like 300 shit mate versus, versus the Persians balls of steel gazer just just hideous confidence he just knew he was he just knew he was the one didn't he what a lad other fins 
December 21st, 1939, Simo achieved his highest daily count of 25 kills. Simo would go out dressed in winter snow Jeez. camouflage and take a day's worth of supplies, crawl to his position, and sit in the snow wow. for hours. In temperatures as low as minus 40 Jesus degrees Celsius Christ. or minus 40 degrees Fahrenheit, he would also... Now let me tell you something, there's nothing worse then not moving and holding a rifle in freezing cold conditions. Your fingers start to numb, you know, you start to get an SCI, so freezing cold injuries, you can't move your extremities, because your extremities go first. Like, like he must have had to do a lot of admin, like on his feet as well, with like socks, because like, obviously your feet sweat, then the socks get cold, your sweat freezes. So like, you know, it can, not only has he got to fight the Russians, but he's got to, he's got to fight the weather conditions as well. So I just, I just can imagine how hard it must have been like even just feeling that shot and being smooth because I, I'd imagine he would have lost uh, like senses in his extremities and his fingertips first, you know, so it's hideously impressive. Amazing. He'll camouflage his position by packing snow in front of him to prevent the muzzle blast wafting up snow and put snow in his mouth to control the vapor of his breath from giving away his position. <laughs> the rifle he used throughout the war was the same Finnish Civil Guard variant of the Mosin Nagant rifle that he trained with during his time in the Civil Guard known as the M2830. This rifle featured front sights known as Spitz. the Spitz because they resembled the Spitz oh, okay. dog. Oh, yeah. Simo preferred to use iron sights instead Mad. of a scope, which were obtained from a captured Soviet version of the rifle. This is because the scopes could give away his position, reflecting yeah. the sun's glare or cloud up in the cold. Now that is hideously alley because I hate not using a scope of my rifle, but the reason why he's done it is, is obviously if there's counter snipers that he doesn't want to give away his position via like a uh, lens glare. Now shooting at long range with an iron sight is nails because there's a, there's a certain point where the sight picture just becomes blurred at a certain range when you're looking when you're looking down the sight. And obviously the further, further away the target the smaller it is and that iron sight can actually just cover up the entire target and you can't even see where it is. So not only is this geezer just an absolute machine with nature? He, he, it's just, he's hideously ugly, mate. I don't know how else to describe it. Like, that's just talent. Talent. Pure talent and nothing else. Old environment. He would zero his sights at the common combat distance of 150 meters. One combat engagement came after Simo was assigned to take out a Soviet sniper who had killed three platoon leaders. Wow. He found a position and waited Jumping for several hours. As the sun was setting, he noticed its rays reflecting off the sniper's scope in no. the distance. The enemy sniper started to stand up to go back, and Simo pulled the trigger, taking him out in one shot. The Soviets took the threat of Simo seriously and deployed counter snipers and artillery strikes to try to take him out. He even gained a the nickname, white, uh, the White Death. The White Death. Simo was wounded in the last week of the war when a Soviet infantryman shot him with an explosive bullet. The bullet hit Simo's face, but he was evacuated in time before the Finns were overrun. He was decorated with numerous yeah, awards bet. and promoted from corporal straight to second he, lieutenant. He deserves it, mate. Later in the Winter War on February 17, 1940, Simo was also awarded with a specially made honorary rifle Model 28 from Swedish businessman Eugen Johansson. By the end of the Winter Legend. War, Simo was credited with 505 confirmed sniper kills of Soviet soldiers, which he achieved within 100 days and in the time of year where daylight hours are low. This makes him the record holder. Just nuts about this guy's story. He was just against the odds. Everything he was doing, he was always the underdog and he'd come out on top. And I love an underdog story, mate. I always root for the underdog. And this geezer was just the underdog via the capacity of what both armies had and his army versus the Russians, the weather conditions, the attachments on his rifles. It, his geezer just comes out on top every single time. Fucking hell, do they even make blokes like this anymore? What a legend, mate. For the highest number of confirmed sniper kills, he had also reported 200 kills with his <laughs> Suomi KP-31 machine gun. <laughs> just getting too much. When He's terminated. Simo, it had tore into his left jawbone and knocked out some of his teeth which he needed several surgeries to fix. However, he would eventually make a recovery and live a long life. In a way by that video, my military knowledge, especially for being ex army, isn't great, but that's because it was all just, I was just super focused on my regiment and nothing else. So I never really dug into like, you know, um, the world and what's happened and stuff. And that's blown away my mind, man. That's nuts, that's crazy.
Well, thank you very much for watching. Take care, take it easy. Peace. Better subscribe to Names Nico or else, and you better like it too. Or why I order.